Hi, welcome back to Lumrim. And <laughs> I have a friend from Shenzhen. He told me I counted the seven wrong. It's true. Okay. The first one is equanimity. We don't count it among the seven. And then uh, Marche, which means recognize that all beings have been your mom. Chin Chen, remember all the nice things they did for you when they were your mom. Chin So, try to pay them back. Champa, love them. Ning Jay, have, what do you call it? Sorrow for their troubles, compassion. And then I forgot to mention Saksam uh, Namda, which is to take personal responsibility to take care of them. So I forgot to mention that one. And then we're on number seven now, which is the result of the first seven. Make sense? No, it doesn't. Yeah, okay. So it's really six and a half before that. And we're on seven. Okay. All right, here we go. Samkini. Okay, and I like to go through the Tibetan on the Lamrim. My teacher went through it three times, and it helped me a lot. Uh, again, I do believe this is the greatest book ever written in Tibetan language. So as a, you know, a lot of the classics that we study in the mixed nuts, for example, they are translations of Sanskrit. They were not written in Tibetan. Uh, so, and, and also the, the Shastras, the ancient commentaries. So we have 990 sutras and tantras written in Sanskrit. We have uh, 3,700 Shastras from India, commentaries. And, uh, then, then, then the Tibetan tradition starts. After 4,600 books, then starts the Tibetan tradition, which is roughly about 300,000 books. It's the largest scriptural tradition in the, in the world. And uh, that's why we're trying to catalog them all and input them all and save them all. So that would take another 500 years or something. Okay, we're, we finished 35 years. We finished 16 million pages. It's online for free, uh, but we still have a long way to go. Okay. Mm. So if you want to learn uh, Tibetan language and therefore open your mind to 300,000 spiritual classes, then this is the book to do it. So I'm, I'm going to keep mentioning the Tibetan words. It will plant a seed in your mind three lifetimes from now, you'll take an interest in it. Okay. All right. Dumba Samkini. So uh, here's the, we have reached the seventh of the seven step advices. Okay. They thought kur, kur, uh, say kur. Kur means a heavy load. Okay. Kur means a heavy load. All right. Kir means to carry it. Okay, kur means to carry a heavy load. What's the word in Sanskrit for a wife? Kur. It's the, in Sanskrit, it's Bertha, which probably came into Bertha. Okay, I'm sorry, Bertha. Uh, but it means bur burden comes from the same root. It means uh, in the ancient times, in the less enlightened times. The boy was carrying the, the lady. Okay. Uh, so there's your core. Okay. Now he says, this person says, Nupa, Ayo, Ayo, say Ayo. Ayo means, you can almost guess, it means, I'm not sure I could do that. Ayo means, well, you know, now that I understand everything involved with planet jumping, like, I don't know. I, I think it's a little bit out of my skill set. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I can handle that, you know. And if I, 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 I don't know if I could do that. Ranglani Samjan Chiki Dun Chepe Nipa Ang Me, okay? Hundred dollars. Rangla Samjan Chik Nupa Me. 
Come on, Stanley. 100 bucks. 99, 98. No. That's a closer guess. <laughs> but I'm happy. At least he's trying. Uh, Semchen chiki denche to to do the to take care of one living being nupa me nupa yeah I can't even take care of one person you know here's a picture for you guys okay <laughs> like I you want me to take care of all living beings I can't goddamn take care of myself you know you know maybe two three impossible. One is hard for me, you know. I can I can hardly take care of myself, and you want me to take care of every living being. I mean, come on, it's kind of a joke, right? You know, and it's very funny, and it's so true, right? My God, I can't even pay my own bills. You want me to take care of everybody else's bills? You know, you must be crazy. You know, it's like I I truly have trouble taking care of myself and and i don't really i mean it sounds nice and i think it would be very noble to take care of everybody but to be honest i have days when i can't take care of myself you know so i i don't know about this thing bang meh uh then unkyan dunche bar new ken she tell. By the way, this is the definition of nupa, right? Dunja nupa, to be able to do a, a function. It's the it's the technical definition in in logic for a functioning thing. It's able to perform a function. So uh, cell means what's chak cell? Chak cell means prostrate, but what's it literally mean? Chak means hand. Cell means to look for something. And it, it means to, the word in Tibetan for prostrating means to, to look for a gift from the hand of your lama. Look, cell means to search for, chak means hand, honorific. Chak, the word, it's interesting. The word for prostration in Tibetan means to seek something nice from the hand of your teacher. Okay, so here we have cell. Uh, cell here means, is there a dunche nupa? Is there someone dunche nupa? Is there anybody who has that ability? Okay, like, I'm open to the idea of trying to develop that ability. I, right now, to be honest, I can't even take care of one person. But, I'm open to the possibility if you can show me one person who can do it. You know, I can try to figure out how they're doing that, you know. So show me one person. So means, you know, I'm, I'm looking for one person who can do it, okay? And then I'll, I'll try to copy them. I'll try to copy them. Okay? So here's what the sentence says. You know, yeah, okay, take care of all the means, right. I can't even take care of myself. Okay. But if you can show me, show me somebody who can do it, then, you know, I'll, I'll meet them, I'll talk to them, maybe I can learn. I'm open to learning. Just show me someone who can do that, okay. Uh, then it says, Reshi Jita Dear Chewat Samba Dangyachin So Kimi. Then Pabon Krimpache says, well, uh, let's just take those really super capable people in the world, okay? Let's take those really strong people in this world. You can find people who are really strong. In this life, there are people like, I don't know, famous politicians or famous uh, Elon Musk, there, there are people, special people, tough people, great people. Let's take their example, you know, and then here's a picture of them. Okay. 
this picture has more meaning than you guess. Okay, what, what's the deeper meaning of this picture? Yeah, in the end, they are just dead meat. <laughs> okay, all these Elon Musks, all these uh, super powerful politicians. In, yeah, they look strong, but in the end, they're just dead meat. Okay, same as you and me, not much difference. Okay, they can lift a little more stuff, they can run a little faster, they can collect more money, they can attack another country, and in the end, they're just dead meat. They're all the same, you know. So that's what he says next because take those big people, they are also helpless. They are also cannot even take care of themselves. Okay, these big politicians, these big power guys, uh, these big business people, these wealthy guys. You know, he's considering a possibility and he's rejecting it. And I said, "Well, how about Elon Musk? How about these big, you know, war guys? These big, powerful guys, nuclear power. You know, they must be powerful. You know, and they're like, yeah." They're just dead meat. They're just skin hanging on dead meat. You know, they're the same as us. They don't have any more power than you have. You know, you can't even have a good day for yourself. Then guess what? Neither can they. Okay. All the power they seem to have, they, there's nothing there. They're just, they're just meat waiting to die. You know, same as us. They're the same as us. So it's funny, you know, Bob Okrimache says, well, yeah, okay, I'll show you somebody who can take care of lots of people, these guys. And then Paboka in his own sentence, he says, nah, they're just dead meat too, you know. They're just going to end up in some garbage pile like, like everybody else, you know. Okay. And they will be forgotten quickly, by the way. Okay. There's, there's nothing more frustrating in translating the ancient books than trying to keep track of dead kings. And, uh, you know, the, the, the sentence is always the same. The most powerful guy of Bugadugu, you know. And you're like, he's dead, he's gone. Bugadugu's dead and gone, you know. Where the hell is Bugadugu? And then it takes like a year to find this vast kingdom of Bugadugu, you know. And the kingdom's gone. The city's gone. The city's buried on 120 feet of dirt. Travesty, where Buddha taught the diamond cutter. Uh, finally, they found it not long ago. I went there. It's 120 feet down. It, Shravasti means the biggest city around, you know, famous. Vaishali, these famous cities, New York, Paris, Moscow, you know, they're all, they're going to read them in a book and say, what's Paris? What's, what's New York, you know? And they're going to say, oh, you know, some kind of ruins. You can find them, uh, you know, you go dig under the New Atlantic coastline. And uh, you can find this Manhattan. You know, it'll always be like that, okay? So he's like, mm, okay. How about our hats? You know, our hats are pretty powerful guys, you know, definition in our heart, roughly, yeah, what, say again, yeah, they have stopped their negative emotions forever, I always think of it in terms of my little brother, my, we had, I had four, we were four brothers in my family, and uh, we were divided into, we call the big guys and the little guys. And the big guys slept on two bunk beds and the little guys slept in another room. On two. So we kind of had this division between the big guys and, and the little guys. And the mission of the two little guys was to irritate the two big guys. So, the, and they actually would say in the morning, I'm going to make you mad today. You know, I will piss you off today. And you're like, nah, you can't piss me off, you know. Now that you warn me, you can't piss me off. They could always do it, you know. <laughs> and uh, by the end of the day, you're like, ah, 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> and they said they would actually laugh at us. The little guys would laugh at the big guys. Ah, we piss you off, you know. We did it. We got you upset again, you know. And you're like, dang, you know. And I always thought the definition of an arhat is a big guy who can't be pissed off by a little guy. Okay. The person who can no longer be made upset is the definition of an arhat. Okay. Arhat. They have defeated that enemy, right? They're also dead meat. They're also dead meat. It can't really help. It doesn't really help other people. They also die. Okay? They also die. Being an arhat doesn't change this, your body. They're also dead meat. Okay? They reach nirvana, but it's not enough to be of a real help to other people. It's not enough. Okay? means they can't really help people that much, okay? They can teach them how to not get upset at the little guys, but they can't teach them how not to die, okay? They don't know that yet. They haven't got there yet, okay? So even, even Nirvana, okay, not enough. Not enough to be able to help other people, okay? Yeah. Chang stem sata bawa tabur, sanjeng ki den se pa shinti ka chewa yang. Um, and then Pabongka Rinpoche starts going up the ladder of spiritual achievement, right? So what's next after Arhat? Sad Dambu. Sad Dambu. Uh, Bodhisattva on the first Bodhisattva level. Ten Bodhisattva levels, right? So on the day that you see emptiness directly, uh, you reach a level called Rapta Goa. And, 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 and by definition, when you reach that level, you also have bodhicitta. So you achieve direct perception emptiness and you achieve bodhicitta. You're on the first bodhisattva level of 10, of 10 levels, okay? Can they help people? He says, Samjanki Dun Zeba Shindu Gachewa. He says, Yeah, maybe they could do some good stuff. Kiwa Chi Toki Chan Samki. But compared to Kiwa Chi Tok, and that's a new word for you guys. I think Tim never saw it. Kiwa uh, Chi Tok means uh, one life to go. A bodhisattva with one life to go before they become enlightened. Okay, so that's called kewa chiktok. The person who just reached the first of the ten bodhisattva levels, compared to the person who's like on nine point nine or something, uh, they can't. They're not really that helpful. I'd rather find the nine point nine guy than the guy who just saw emptiness. Okay. All right. Uh, so he's going up through the ladder. People who just saw emptiness, yeah, they can help you a lot. But compared to people who are half an hour from becoming Buddha, I'll take the second one. Okay. All right. Midun means they can't compare. Uh, now, nah. what's next? One life to go. Is there anybody between? This is cute. He says, Daikyang Chansam Sipa Tamapa. Sipa Tamapa means, well, try to imagine a guy who's in his final, his or her final life as a Bodhisattva. Okay, they're, they're going to be a Buddha in this life. And they are Chang Chung Kishing Ki Chung. This is one of the 12 features of a true monk or nun. They make their home shingitum, yeah, at the base of a tree. A real monk, a real nun. The reason they have this cute shawl is that's a sleeping bag. <laughs> they wear a sleeping bag. 
nowadays it's all ceremonial and it's a big mess. You get caught without your shawl, you get beat by the debate master. You get caught folding your shawl the wrong way, you get beat by the debate master. No one in the whole monastery has ever used their shawl as a sleeping bag, but that's what they were for. That's what the shawl is for, okay? And uh, so in the ancient times, if you stayed in a monastery, you were breaking your vows. If you stayed in a, in a covered enclosure, you were breaking your vows. You're supposed to sleep under a tree in your sleeping bag. <laughs> That's why wool, wool shawls were so popular. Uh, okay. And we're going to talk about wool shawls, by the way. Uh, anyway, why does it come here? He's Chang Chu Gi Xing Gi Chu. Chang Chu Gi Xing. Xing means tree, right? What's Chang Chu? Yeah, already sat down under the Bodhi tree. Already sat down. By the time they stand up, they will be a Buddha. Okay, they already sat down. You know, we, were you there? Did you go to? We went to Bodh Gaya. I translated the Dhammakara Sutra. The first time I ever taught it was sitting there where the Buddha sat. That's the first time I ever taught the Dhammakara in English. Uh, we, we went to Bodh Gaya and I sat. I put my bottom down where the Buddha put his bottom down and the Bodhi tree was over my head and, uh, and I taught the diamond cutter. So now he says, well, you got this kind of Bodhisattva who's got one life to go, but how does, how does their ability to help you compare to the ability of the guy who just sat down and by the time he stands up, he'll be a Buddha. He or she will be a Buddha. Are they useful? He says, not really. <laughs> I mean, they, they also didn't cross that line yet. Okay? They cannot take care of countless beings. They are sitting down. They are putting their bottom pigu down in front of the Bodhi tree. Uh, but they're not there yet. They didn't cross that line yet to where they can take care of everybody at the same time. They're still putting one bottom down on one tree. Okay. So it's beautiful how he goes up to the, you know, first he starts with us guys at the office. You know, like, I can't even have a good day. Don't ask me to take care of all living beings. Well, how about these big muscular, you know, Elon Musk and these other politicians? Well, they're just dead meat too, you know. Well, how about uh, our hawks? Yeah, great, our hearts, you know, and they, they, they disappear in the run. Uh, great. What did it do for me? And then, well, how about these bodhisattvas who are just scientists? Yeah, you're getting there. They're pretty good. But they don't compare to those guys who are in their final lifetime. Yeah, well, how about those guys? Not, I mean, among all the guys in their final lifetime, I'd rather be the guy who's putting his butt down in front of the Buddha tree and he's, in half an hour he's going to be a Buddha. Yeah, but is he really helpful? I'll take a full Buddha, you know. I'll have what she's having. <laughs> I'll take full Buddha. Okay. Misupa means don't have patience. Pe means example. But bear misupa is an idiom which means matchless. You cannot find a anything better. Out of that whole list of cool people, I'll take the full Buddha. The guy after he stands up, uh, after putting his bottom down at the Bodhi, Bodhi tree, I'll, I'll take that guy. Okay? Very me simple. And then he says, here's your picture. This is how you're going to remember. Mm. If you compare the square footage of the universe, to the space in this guy's palm, that's the difference, okay? A person who has become enlightened, who has stood up from the Bodhi tree, you compare their ability to take care of people, it's equal to the length and breadth of the universe and compared to, the, compared to this much space. This much space is everybody else, even in our heart, even, a, even someone who saw emptiness directly, 
even a person who's in their last life, even a person who's sitting down at the Bodhi tree and they have half an hour to go, all of their ability to help people is this much. And then as soon as you cross that line under the Bodhi tree and you become a full Buddha, then, then your capacity is equal to the universe, the endless universe. Your capacity matches the square footage of the endless universe. And that's the difference. He says, go for that one. Don't settle for less, you know. Come on, Nirvana, Arya, Arhat, go for it. Go for the, go for the big one. Because your ability is a billion, it's countless. There's no measurement of how much people you can help. Okay? There's no measurement. Uh, Samba, Gyutsu Dong, Tumba, Shendun, Beme, Fendup, the Chua. And here's an important uh, description of a, of a Buddha's of capacity. And they say, say, Shendun, Sundru. So it's a common uh, Tibetan personal name, Sundru. Geshe Supa's first name was Sundru, right? Eli? In Wisconsin. Great Geshe. Sundru uh, Supa. So Sundru means. Uh, It's the capacity to show up at the moment you're needed without premeditation, okay? So someone gets a flat tire in Texas Canyon and you're there. You know Texas Canyon? It's where all those boulders are on the way here from Tucson. That, that little hill where there's all these weird boulders, it's a great place to have a flat tire. There's all these uh, 18 wheelers and there's no place to pull off. If you ever have a flat tire, it's going to be there. Uh, Sundra means uh, you just show up. You're the next car. You're in the next car. You're always in the next car. Okay. Someone breaks down. They're changing their tire. You're always in the next car. You stop and you help them. Okay. Nest, chew. Her, her car went off the road there. She fell off a cliff. Her car went off a cliff there on the way back one night after class. And no one saw her. And her, she just disappeared. And these two uh, guys from Mexico were driving by and they said, hey, somebody's down there. And they stopped. And they took care of her. So That's syndrome. That means you show up at the right time in the right place. Total syndrome. Everywhere in the universe, when someone needs you, you're boom, you're there. That would be better, right? Like that's syndrome, okay? So try to imagine syndrome. Now, what if people, what if somebody breaks down at Texas Canyon and somebody breaks down outside of Bowie, which is worse? You know, then you're both places at the same time. That's Flinder, okay? They break down out here at midnight. I've done that before. And uh, you're, you're broken down out here at midnight. And your friend is at Texas Canyon, just had a flat tire. And Flinder means you show up at both places at the same moment, okay? And then how many others? No number. No number. That would be cool. That would be nice, okay? That's bodhicitta, okay? Bodhicitta means, may I be the universe's tire fixer, you know? And I just show up. I'm always in the next car, and I always stop for you. And I fix your, I fix your tire, no matter where you are. That, that's something. That's really cool. That's the difference between the space in your palm and the space in the whole universe. Right? This is fixing one person's tire. And that's fixing everybody's tire at the same moment, okay? In the whole universe. And that, that's not a bad example. That's actually correct, okay? All the flat tires in the whole universe, you're fixing at the same time. That's something, okay? And, and you have to think like that when you think of bodhicitta. Because you are limited right now to one physical body, you naturally believe that you could only help one person at one time. 
And you have to get over that limitation. You have to stop thinking like that, okay? Stop thinking that I wish I could help somebody, you know? You got to think, could I automatically help everybody at the same time in, in different bodies? And that, that's sexy. That's something, okay? So try to imagine it. Just try to imagine it. And then that will help you reach that state of mind, right? I'd like to fix all the tires at the same time. Okay. I'd like to sweep out all the cabins at Diamond Mountain at the same time. <laughs> By the way, I don't know who cleaned my cabin, but it's really nice and I appreciate it. And I know what it is to clean the cabin. And I'm sure they were done one by one. And, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful, the place looks very beautiful. So thank you. We're blessed with special people. Okay, Sangye Nyi Yenshin. Only the Buddha is the universal tire fixer. Okay. All right. De Gopan Tob Na Yenden Didan Di Sheng Ar Kyam Dur Kap Ki Yenden Nam Dir Jarne. Back in the teachings on going for refuge, we talked about how much a Buddha can help you when you go for refuge. So now he says, reverse that teaching. What's that mean? You're not you thinking about how much the Buddhists can help you. You are the Buddha saying, yeah, that's me. Oh, that's a nice description. That's who I am. Yeah, so he said, if you wanna have some fun, go back to the refuge teaching and look at it from the point of view of the person they're talking about, not from the point of view of the person who needs help, you know. But you know, Sangye like you know, I take Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dhammaya. Now you're the Buddhaya that they're talking to. Now, now think about how cool you are. He says, you might want to go back there and look up all those cool things that Buddha is supposed to do for you when you got in trouble. And now think of being, being that person, okay? So guess what grandpa did? I went back and got you that list, okay? So I think when you teach, you should prepare in a leisurely way, like the whole drive. You gotta get Ellie to drive you around so you can prepare in the car. That's the story of my life. And uh, you should, when they say think back, you should go back. Okay, if you're going to be a real teacher, you should take the time to, to go back and find. Okay, so we're going to go. I actually not only went back, I got you pictures. All right. Uh, here's the first one, Tim. Yeah, I, 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 this is called Rang uh, Jigpa Tamjene Duo, means uh, you are beyond all fear yourself. You are beyond all fear yourself. First quality of refuge object. Now you are the refuge object, right? So before it was, hey, take refuge in the Buddha. They are beyond all fear. Now it's, hey, take refuge in me. I'm beyond all fear, okay? And this guy's, you ever stood on places like that? Like you're gonna be the first person to walk out there and the rock falls off and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always think that. I, I never get on those rocks. I always stand back. I'll be the first one to, where the rock falls off, you know? Okay, so totally beyond all fear. Nothing to fear. Imagine, right? Not even death. Nothing. Fearless. Okay, you will be. Okay? You will be. You will be that. That's, that's bodhicitta. Now, instead of refuge, which is taken by wimps, now you're bodhicitta. Now you're like, I'm the one, you know. I, I'm not afraid of anything. I can help you. I can help you. I can fix your tire, okay? That's the first one, okay. Second one, Tim. Mm. Shen uh, Jigpa Tanjin, I do a top K, Tim, for 10 cents. 
Okay, 12 cents. 14. Yeah, skillful means, right? Top kippa. Skillful means, top kippa. All right. Uh, why are we showing this guy? Uh, I like the word agile. I like the word agile. Agile means, uh, you know, can do special stuff when it's necessary. Think ag agile, you know, they're like, we got a problem here. You're like, hey, 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 I got it. I got that. I got that. That's uh, top K. Buddhists are super mentally agile problem solvers. Okay, that's what, uh, to do what? Shen Jigpa Tamje Le Duo, to free all other beings from fear. They are super creative, you know, super computer creative. Their mind is like a super computer. And if someone has a problem, they're like, jig, 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 jig. okay, I got it. You know, so that's the second quality of a Buddha. Special figure or outer of solutions for people who are screwed up. Jig, 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 jig. I got it. I got just the thing for you. I'll take care of everything. I'll take care of everything. Isn't that nice to be able to say that? I, I love that. Like it doesn't happen very often, but somebody's like, I got a problem. And, and you're like, ha. I got it covered. I got it covered. I, I, don't worry. I, I got it. You know. Okay. Somebody comes to you. You just made six hundred thousand dollars this week. Somebody says, "Can you loan me two hundred bucks?" And you're like, "I got it covered." You know. Chill out. I got it all covered. So that's the second quality of a Buddha. I I got it covered. Super agile. Problem solving. Top kepa. Top kepa means uh, super agile mental problem solver for anything people need. You're like, I got it. I got it. I know what you should do. Okay. They save you from all your problems. Okay. All right. Third. We got four, by the way. Here's the third one. Uh, -da. You have a wag for everybody. <laughs> That's the definition of a Buddha. You have a wag for everybody. <laughs> you know, I have a dog. I mean, my wife's son has a dog like that. He's got a wag for everybody. You know, you can kick him, you can spit on him, you can yell at him. He's like, <laughs> you know, so. I call it a wag for every Kunla Tukje Chimbo. Equal compassion and love for all loving beings. And Nearing Mepa. Nearing Mepa. Nearing Chadana Jana Chimaru, Jawa Juchi Jawa, Daki Jawa, Deta Chimipa, Lama Sejin Jula Pusu. It's the definition of equanimity. Nearing 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 Mepa. Nyawa, Ringwa, Mepa. Tim? Nyawa, Ringwa, Mepa. Definition of Tangyum. Seme Tangyum. Immeasurable of equanimity. I give 50 cents for the Sanskrit. Upeksha. Upa Iksha. Overlook the differences. German cognate, Algen. English cognate, I. Look, overlook the differences. Okay, anyway, nearing chart bang means I'm incapable of treating some people as closer and some people as farther. I'm not capable of saying, I'll take care of you, but I won't take care of you. You know, that's the third quality of the Buddha. Okay, so equal wags for everybody. <laughs> Probably lick also. <laughs> you know? Okay, they don't have favorites. They don't play favorites, okay? If you're a living being, you get a wag and a lick, you know? And there's dogs like that, right? You try to kick them and they're like licking you, you know? And uh, so the Buddha has this quality of uh, equal affection towards every other living being. And there's dogs like that, right? You ever met dogs like that? Yeah, you try to kick him and they're like licking your foot, you know. And, uh, 
Okay, equal wag. Um, how many we got qualities? Four. So now we got one more, right? All right. Uh, the waitress who treats all diners the same regardless of the tip. Okay, the waitress who treats all diners the same regardless of the tip. And this is a specific quality of Buddha as a refuge. They treat everybody the same, no matter how they treat the Buddha. So they treat the Buddha nice. They treat the Buddha bad. They yell at you. Uh, they yell at you. They praise you. They kick you. They massage you. You treat them all the same. Okay. So there's another kind of equanimity. Okay. It's called pentak uh, matak means uh, whether you have done something for them lately or not. What's that joke? Don't you remember I, I gave you a hundred bucks last year? And then the answer is, well, what have you done for me lately? You know, and uh, Buddhists don't have this question. Buddhists don't say, yeah, you ain't done nothing for me lately, you know. So it's, it's similar to WAG, but different, right? Okay. It's similar to the universal WAG and link. And then the idea that even if she, she knows, where's that waitress, Tim? <coughs> I got to find a bunch of waitresses. It's on my mind. I don't have one. I have a cafe and nobody in it. No customers and no staff. Uh, <laughs> right now it's equal uh, but she she's being nice to them uh, and she's not worried about it what they do she's not going to get tip or she's not going to get tip she doesn't care she's going to treat you the same and that's the last quality of a Buddha that we cover here Okay. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to go through the pictures one more time let's just go through them all right uh, for this second class today. We'll have three classes today. Let's review the pictures, okay? And then we have a little extra time. I'll give you a preview of the next class. Okay, you ready? First picture, Tim, starts with, it's the guy with the glasses at the computer. Somebody tell me what it means. Yeah, it's a it's a rhetorical question. I can't even take care of myself, and you want me to take care of everything? You must be joking, okay? So that's the first thing to remember from today's class. Second one, Tim. Don't feel bad. Nobody else can help anybody either. <laughs> okay, so don't feel bad. Every non Buddha is in the same boat, even up to Aryas, even up to Arhats, even up to people sitting under the Bodhi tree but didn't get up yet. They're all in the same place, you know. They look strong, but they are dead meat, okay? Look strong, dead meat, okay? They're not, guess what? Nobody's better than you to help everybody either. Norm, normal people can't help anybody either. Even our yes, even our hearts, even people reach nirvana, they can't really help people. The total amount, what? Next picture. What's that? Is compared to the help that, yeah, nice. The help that anyone who's not a Buddha yet could give to somebody is this much. And the help that you can give to people after your Buddha is equal to the equal to the equal to the boundless universe. There's no comparison. One is infinite. How do you compare infinite to any number? Okay. All right. And then we uh, then he said, look, uh, go back to the four things that made Buddhas a worthy object of refuge back in the refuge teachings and then reverse it and and feel good about yourself because you're going to be that now now we're not talking taking refuge we're talking 
being the refuge. <laughs> yeah. And that has four cool qualities. First one was totally fearless. Okay. Like you will, nothing can, nothing can threaten you. Even death cannot threaten you. Okay. The ultimate threat is meaningless for you. You have overcome death itself. So you're like, somebody's like, I'm going to kill you. You're like, no, you're not. <laughs> Chill out, man. I can't be killed. I'm, I'm, I'm past that. You know? Okay. So what else could worry you? you know? Oh, I'm going to steal. I'm going to steal your wallet. I have access. Namkadze. I have access to the wealth of the universe like that. Take the wallet, okay? God damn it, you know. I have. I'll. I'll pick up ten million in in the next five minutes. You know, I'm. I'm cool. Take my wallet. You know. So imagine you had these capacities. Okay, you'd be fearless. You know? Okay. Next one, Tim. I like. I mean, focus on the word agile and the idea of a supercomputer. So you are a. Yeah, super agile, mental, creative problem solver. Yeah, like uh, any problem people come to you with, you're like, Cat. oh yeah, they go like, okay, but they saw you were going to ask before you asked. They knew the answer before you asked. Okay, that's convenient, right? But still, they do this game, you know. Oh. You have, oh, let me figure it out, you know. Oh, I got it, you know. Okay. Don't forget when you become a booty after. It's a polite delay, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, let me see. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Okay. All right. Uh, next one. Ta da. Yeah. Nearing Mepa. Nearing Mepa. They don't feel someone's closer or someone's farther. They feel everyone's close. They never meet a person who feels less intimate or, or, or more or more. There's always, everyone feels the same to them. They love everyone equal wag. Okay, okay. Last one. And they don't care what you do back to them. They don't care if you ever thank them or they don't care if you kick them or, you know. by the way, when you get into this do-gooding business, you're going to get a good number of kicks also. <laughs> like save someone's life and then they kick you and you're like, okay, you know, so this kind of, uh, this kind of equanimity, they, they don't care if you, pay them back. They don't care if you praise them. They don't care how you feel about them. They'll help you anyway. You know, so they're just determined to help you. And that's a nice way to live your life, right? Like you help people without any expectations or even they hurt you back and you're like, yeah, okay. Here, have some more money. You know, here's some more Dharma, you know, and, and you know, so if we could reach that kind of a don't care what people think about you, just keep helping them, uh, it's a very sweet place to be. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, you hate my gut. Here, here's some more money. You know? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. You mess up the cabin I cleaned up and you, that's cool. I'll still clean it for you. Okay, got it? Okay. And uh, next, we're going to talk more about next class about this attitude of, of serving others, uh, no matter what they do back to you. Okay. All right. Gewadi, et cetera. We'll see you in the next class. Bye.